Hey, what's up guys? Happy Sunday, this is Brian Weber. Welcome to my latest YouTube video. And it's been a, a long time coming for me to make this video about capital defense management, aka risk management. And I'm gonna put this video on my personal YouTube channel and my company's price level trading is the name of my company. So you'll have this video on both channels. So both my audiences will be able to get some value from it. So just to go over basically what I'm gonna be talking about, so there's some bullet points on my whiteboard here. So capital defense management can pretty much consists of a few things. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the law of big, uh, large numbers, which is pretty much how casinos make money over the long term. And I'll go into talk about different scenarios for win loss percentage and average loss and average win. Uh, so pretty much that will just describe different trading styles like a scalper or more like a swing trader or someone that holds their position longer. And then I'll talk about some trading psychology as well and talk about ways to accept losses and trust that our trust in our trading plan and stick to it every time so we can maintain that discipline because this, that will pretty much decide the rest of what I'm going to be talking about. If we can't follow the plan, then all this means nothing. And then the last two points, actually going to talk about, it's more of a hands-on, like how to calculate the risk per the account size. And I'm actually going to talk about Top Step Traders $50,000 combine and go into a risk management plan that I use in the past to get funded. And well, I'll pretty much talk about what's the number of contracts to use, um, based on the current balance, uh, what's the per the stop that you're going to use, how many contracts to use, um, how many losses you should allow yourself to have, um, and stuff like that. So it'll be pretty detailed and it'll be a calculation that uh, I think you guys will find very helpful, the people that do the top step trader combine. And lastly, I'll just talk about my capital defense calculator. And I'll go in to calculate my risk per trade that I use on a daily basis with my cash account with AMP. So there's a lot of information that I'm gonna be talking about. And I think it's gonna be very helpful. So let's just jump right in to the first one and I'll see you guys there. All right guys, let's first talk about the law of large numbers. So if you've ever been to a casino and you've gambled, then this will make a lot of sense to you. And a lot of times people will go in to the casino, they play some blackjack, roulette, uh, whatever poker whatever they feel like playing and they get on a hot streak and they make a bunch of money maybe turn a hundred bucks into like let's just use a number a thousand bucks and they might make more and what do they do they don't get up and walk away they actually keep betting and they might end up betting heavier bets and then what happens over the long term which is what the casinos know that I don't have it set up right now for casinos itself because I have it for specifically for trading. So what happens over time is that the casinos know that you're going to keep betting even when you're up a lot of money and they know that you're going to lose that money because you're going to be greedy and they're just profiting on your greed factor because they know this person will keep betting, you know, and if especially if they lose the money they're gonna put more back into it. So now they're even in the hole, they're gonna be more in the hole and they were just up a shit ton of money. And that's exactly how casinos make money and they trust their process, their plan over the long term that they might lose, they might end up losing money initially, but they know that if this person's going to continue to play and we know that eventually the majority of people are gonna lose money and we're gonna be profitable. And the casinos are, that is one of the most profitable businesses out there um, because people get greedy, people gamble, and they they just feel like they can turn a, lot of, a little bit of money into a lot real easily, but it's not that easy. Statistically, it's not in your advantage as the gambler, but the casinos have it rigged. Even if they're over the long term, they're gonna make you know, 51% of the time they'll win. That 49% of the time they know that the, just flip this on its head, say this, the casino making money, or this is you, this is negative, and this is you losing money. They know that over the long term, this, this gambler is gonna lose a lot more money than they're gonna make. And they'll keep coming back because of that, the endorphins that get triggered from them winning that couple of times, and they have, then that 
idea pops up in their head again. Oh, I can make more money. Oh, I can turn this into a lot more money. And that's how casinos keep making money. But let's turn this around and look at it from a trading perspective because we're gonna actually pretend like we are the casino. We're gonna use their strategy in our favor as opposed to uh, losing our money over the long term. We're gonna make more and keep growing it like they do. So let's just say that I have this nice chart here and this, we ha on the y-axis, on the vertical axis, we have average profit per trade. And then on the x-axis, we have number of trades. So you can see we have our losses down here, and I broke it up for losses and, and gains. And the green line is the average winner, or not the average winner, that's actually the, uh, based on the number of trades we took, for each trade, that's the profit that we get. And over time, we have an average ends up being this blue dashed line right here. So for this example, our average winner is a greater than 200 based on this chart, just using even numbers for example's sake. And then let's just say that we keep our losses over the long term, over a thousand plus trades, we keep our loss less than $100 per trade. So what does that mean? We actually have an average loser of less than 100 bucks and we have an average profit average winner of greater than $200. So that's over two to one, uh, over one to two risk reward. So for every 100 bucks we're risking, we're gonna make, according to our plan that we're following, we're gonna make two times or more than that 100 bucks. And this, over the long term, if you just keep this consistency, you might have some spikes in the, in the short term, like you see here, and this could actually be lower, the profit, but eventually, if you stick to your plan, have your patience, set up your trades, wait for your targets, adhere to your stop loss, keep the losses small and let your profits move, move higher and maintain a decent win rate around over 50%, doesn't have to be anything crazy, you will be profitable in the long term. So let's talk about the next topic, which is going to be different scenarios of how this graph might change based on the winning percentage that you have as a trader and then the average win and average loss that you also have. So if you actually have your trading journal, this would be a good time to compare the math that I'm about to talk about and you can actually extrapolate that over in the long term to determine if you're actually gonna be profitable or not. So let's jump and talk about that. All right, let's now talk about win-loss percentages at the top row up here in our table and the average win-loss as well, which will just be uh, our different risk-reward combinations. So I'm sure as a trader, you guys have probably seen this chart before, but this, this should really motivate you to follow your plan and stick to your risk-reward and never move your stop. Um, always keep the risk consistent, maintain your discipline because over the long term, based on the type of trader that you are, these are the type of scenarios that we can look at that, that are definitely possible. So let's start with obviously one to one risk reward. You have to make at least 50% win rate just to break even. Um, so if you're risking, if you're risking uh, 100 bucks to make 100 bucks and you win 50% of the time, you're gonna probably be negative for the year just because of commissions. But once you get to 60% with a one to one ratio and you're moving towards I would say everything to the right of 60% 60, 60 is going to be more of a scalper. And this in this area, 60, 70, 80%, I would say this first row is all scalpers. They, they're typically, you never really see a scalper risking more than um, risk one to one on its risk reward ratio. But a lot of times I've heard scalpers actually risking more to make about half of their risk. So that requires an even higher win rate, probably upwards of 80% to even be profitable. But let's take a look more on this left side. So if you're more of a trend trader, if you're more in between, say you wanna to stick to the, you, you don't really enjoy getting in and out of the market really quick, you'd rather wait for your setup to form and then let your trade work out, hold it you know, for longer than 30 seconds to five minutes, You know, let the trend, if, especially if it's trending, let the trade work out. So with a 20% win rate, if you make five times what you're risking, you're gonna make money at the end of it. So, but in reality, I think the sweet spot, I don't have my marker, let me grab that dude. I think the sweet spot 
is probably going to be for most people is going to be in this area so I would say anywhere from two to four risk reward ratio and I would go from 40 this box right here this is where most if you want to be a good trader most good traders I feel like lie in that area so they have a win rate between 40 to 60 percent and they're making on each trade they're winning on they're making anywhere from two to four times their risk and this is kind of the area that you want to be in it's like the middle between not making money and making a lot of money um, or I would say not like that but actually having a low win rate to high win rate but making a good amount more than what you risk and it's a good area to be in and in the long term you will make a decent amount of money and I think this is kind of where my trading is currently and I used to be in this area the top right and to be honest with you it's super stressful because one bad trade will knock out all your profits and you the problem with scalping is this could be a whole other video is like you expect to win a lot and when you don't win it kind of messes with your psychology as opposed to um, if you just wait for your trades to set up and you're risking at least half what you're looking to make I think that's just a better it's better on your mindset and it's better for a long term as a trader um, and you'll be able to catch the bigger moves you know and you'll be in the trade you won't take profits prematurely you'll be able to keep runners and I think that's how you'll be able to stay within this this rectangle or this square right here so let's talk about next I'm gonna talk about a little bit about psychology all right guys this is an important topic but I'll make it short and sweet because Kristen is actually way better at than me at this explaining the psychology part of trading and she has some really great techniques on overcoming a lot of obstacles that traders typically have during their journey but I just want to talk about quickly as a as it pertains to this video so let's talk about accepting losses and trusting our trading plan um, first I want to talk about losses in general um, if you guys know Mark Douglas he is a legend in the industry he's written the very famous book called trading in the zone and if you haven't listened to it or read it I highly recommend it. it's one of the best trading psychology books out there so what what he says is that losses are simply the cost of doing business so that's great what does that actually mean how can I so how can I relate that to some way that you can actually understand that it's important to realize that losses when you take a loss trading it's normal and it should be comfortable and you shouldn't freak out and do things to self-sabotage yourself let's use let's use your normal daily routine say if you're a nine-to-fiver I have a nine-to-five job I work every day during the week you know after I'm done trading in the morning let's talk about losses uh, as it relates to that so most people will go to work and when they get their paycheck they just they're super happy um, they just got paid they got a bunch of extra money but they don't realize that there are losses as an employee as well let's think about this you have a car that you need to get to work you have to put gas in that car you have to pay for car insurance just in case something happens on your way and your commute to work you have to buy clothes to get to work um, so you have to look presentable you can't just show up in uh, board shorts and a tank top which would be nice but companies aren't there yet they might be soon but not just yet um, what other expenses do you have um, you you have health insurance little things like that um, so all those things add up to a lot of money for most people uh, as it pertains to like a percentage of their income because most people spend more than they actually earn which is not a good thing um, so if you look at it like that um, you're risking you're, you're you have these losses as a nine-to-five employee but no matter how much you risk or how much you lose as an employee you're always gonna make the same amount at least for that year or until you get a raise with trading you have to look at it from an opportunistic standpoint where I risk the same amount but I have the opportunity to make a lot more you know there's no there's no cap on the ceiling of how much you can actually earn and compounding works in magnificent ways as a trader um, so if you stick to your plan follow your risk management plan or capital defense management plan 
and you slowly build up capital over time, your, your lot size or the amount of contracts you'll be trading will increase over time. And the money you have will just grow over time. With an employee, you can't do that. I think my neighbor's here. With that said, losses, just learn to accept them. You have to prepare yourself and just accept that if I'm gonna lose on this trade, it's okay because I know over the long term that as long as I win six out of 10 trades or five out of 10 trades, depending on what your average win rate or average profit is per loss, if it's over 2R, then you'll be fine. Just trust that process, it's okay. You should do like a happy dance when you get stopped out. Like, don't worry about it. If you let it get to you, that's how you really screw yourself. Next thing you know, you're revenge trading, you're entering into a trade for no, no good reason whatsoever, and most of the time you're doing it with way more contracts than you should. Trust me, I've been there, I know from experience. Don't do that. It's not a good idea. Trump trains here. And that leads me into this next quote I have on my board from Ed, another famous trader, Ed Sekota. He says, if you can't take a small loss, sooner or later you're gonna take the mother of all losses. And if you have been in this business for a while and you've learned the hard way, you know exactly what that means. And a lot of people can relate. Um, most professional traders, they have lost large sums of money until they realize that they need to keep their risk constant. They can't be le over leveraging their, their accounts. Say if you have a $10,000 $10, account and you're trading futures, you can't trade 10 lots on the ES um, because every trade that you take, you might, be, you might blow it up on one trade. You might blow it up on two or three if you get lucky. You know, you cannot do that. So there's a lot of meaning in these two quotes. So understand them. If you don't, drop a comment and I can explain them further to you guys. Um, and then the last part, trusting your trading plan. You should have back tested something that you can trust, that you have confidence in over the long term, it will work regardless of um, whether the market's in an uptrend, in a downtrend, it's sideways. You should have a plan for all those types of scenarios. Um, wh what happens when there's like a Trump tweet, uh, stuff like that, like don't trade when that happens, the market's too volatile, maybe wait until it calms down a bit. You need to have a structured plan for all these different scenarios and keep adding to it over time and then testing it to make sure it works through back testing or you can do it through live simulation as well. And then deep down you have to trust in it and know that if I lose on four trades in a row, there's gonna be six winners coming soon or whatever, you know, and I'm gonna make all that back and more. Um, so don't get discouraged by when that happens. So the next part is that I'm gonna talk about uh, I'm actually going to go in to discuss the $50,000 combine with Top Step Trader and what I think are good risk parameters that will help you prevent from blowing up the account per their risk rules uh, and be able to hit the profit target as well. Um, so let's talk, let's talk about that next. Alright, without further ado, let's talk about the $50,000 combine account with Top Step Trader and this is my personal risk plan that how I would approach it to be able to pass the combine. Um, so first let's talk about the rules that Top Step Trader has for that $50,000 account. You have a daily loss limit of a thousand. You have a weekly loss limit, which equals a daily loss limit, which is that's also a thousand. And you have a trailing max drawdown of $2,000. And the number of lots you can trade at any one time is five and you never need to use that many and I'll explain why. And the profit target is 3000 bucks, so very, very achievable. And I think this will make, a, make sense to a lot, of, a lot of you people that are doing the combine and understand maybe where Top Step Trader got these risk parameters because it makes a lot of sense to me after I started doing the math with it. Um, so let's talk about max loss per day that we'll allow ourselves on that $50,000 account. So most people will take 2% on their account and call it a day after they lost that much. 
but let's take half of that. Let's do 1%. So 1% of 50,000 is 500 bucks. So we will stop trading once we lose that much in a day. But let's break this up even more into to what's the number of losing trades in a row that we're willing to allow ourselves before we also call it a day and hit our max loss. And typically for me, I allow myself to take three trades and if I lose three trades in a row, that means I'm not seeing the market very well and I should stop before I dig the hole deeper. So if we take that $500 that we're allowing ourselves per day and we break it up into three, that's about $167 more or less per trade that we allow ourselves. So we, for any one trade, I mean, you can also break this up if you want to take a more uh, a trade that requires more risk, then you have to make sure that no matter what, you never exceed this $500 for the day. But this is actually how I'm gonna approach it. So let's say for the scenario that our win rate is 60%. We have a 60% win rate. And our target risk reward on most of our trades on the average is 2R. So for every, for every 100 bucks, that we risk, we'll make 200 bucks and we'll win 60% of the time. Um, assuming we take three trades per day, uh, it's fine here. And let's just say we're only risking 100 bucks on each trade, just to simplify things. I mean, we can go up to 167, which is completely fine. Um, the number I'm about to give you will actually be less than how long it will take to complete the combine. So just for a hundred bucks to make 200, well, not 300, but that would be cool if you made three R on each trade. 200, it will take about two to two and a half weeks to pass each step. With risking, only trading a one lot, um, but you can also, also if, if within $100 risk per trade, you can trade two contracts. I mean, it's a really tight stop. You can also do that. Um, but if you actually change this to 167 and that was two times that, then uh, it's like 340 bucks. This would actually be about a third less. So you'd probably be able to do it under two weeks given the 60% win rate and the risk reward where you're making 2R on on average for each trade like over the long over the like the span of two weeks that you're trading so that's that would be my risk plan for trading the fifty thousand dollar top step trader combine and this is actually how i passed it in the first place i applied it to a thirty thousand dollar account but if you have a hundred thousand dollar account or a hundred fifty thousand dollar account since a hundred thousand dollar account is twice the fifty thousand dollar and the hundred fifty is twice the fit or three times the 50 all you have to do is multiply this by two and three to get your ideal risk plan so lastly i'm going to talk about uh, the calculator that i use for i call it my capital defense management calculator that i use to to place my entries and my stops to figure out how much how many contracts based on my stop loss i'm going to use on each trade so i always maintain that maximum two percent loss per day um, so I'm allowing myself three trades per day. So let's jump in and talk about that before uh, I let you guys go. So here we have the capital defense calculator that I mentioned in the previous videos. So I use this spreadsheet to calculate my risk per trade, AKA the number of contracts based on the stop loss that I'm going to use. So I'm just gonna use the 50,000 top step trader account as an example show you kind of where I came up with those numbers and in the risk plan that I was just talking about. So there are only three inputs here that I start with. So the account balance at the start of the day, let's just use $50,000 max loss per day that we allow ourselves based on the account size. And instead of 2%, which is the normal that I use on my cash account, I use 1% because the rules on top step trade are a little, a little bit more strict, but they make sense. So we have a max loss of 1% per day. The number of losers per day that were allowed, I have it set at three. So the number of losers per day should be three. 
that we stop trading or we hit the max risk of $500, which is 1% of 50,000. So based on those three inputs, we have a risk per trade of 0.33% and that dollar value ends up being around $167. So step two, we choose the instrument that we want to trade. Right now I only have NQ and ES set up and I'm just going to use NQ because that's what we mainly trade. And since we have a decent amount of risks that we're allowed per trade, I'm not going to use the micros, but I do have it set up for that for a little bit smaller accounts, but we'll select the minis. And let's say we want to go long at 8,600 with a five point stop at 85.95 and our two hour targets automatically calculated. Just to quickly mention the required input is shaded in yellow and the calculation or the output is shaded in green. So the two-hour target is 86.10, and based on that risk, we have only one contract that we're allowed to trade. But this over here on the right is a little bit more interesting. This is the cool part about the spreadsheet. After you have your risk set up, this is where you start paying attention to where you want to take your profit. And it really makes you focus on taking the at least a two-hour trade, if not more. So step four, we'll calculate your profit, profit targets based on the number of R's and number of contracts. So this first one right here, we're looking at the profit target and stop loss with our risk reward in terms of percentage of the underlying account. So if we make two R, that's two times the risk and that's 0.67% of the account. And I have it all set all the way up to 10 R, which is about a little more than 3% of the account. Stop loss obviously stays the same. And the second one right here, this is just what the underlying instrument price should be based on our risk reward. So 2R, we're looking for 86.10 on the NQ and then so on and so forth, all the way up to 10R, 86.50. And the next one is just the same thing, but it's in dollar amounts. So we know how much we're up when we're at those profit targets. And this is the cooler part about this spreadsheet, if you just type in your, your entry and your long or short, this will automatically be calculated down here. You don't actually have to put a stop in because this will have calculated based on your entry and your bias and the number of points you want to use as your stop right here. It'll suggest that or, or rather calculate where your stop loss should be and the number of contracts you can have in that trade per the risk that was calculated in step one. So let's just say if we want to go short, the same thing. We say we want to short 8,600. Our stop will be at 8,605. Our two hour target is now 85.90. And you can see that everything else updated appropriately. So it's a really handy spreadsheet to calculate your risk and identify where you should take profit or at least What's the underlying price of the instrument? What's the percentage of the total account and the return? What's the dollar amount you'll be up? And even better, based on a suggested stop loss, how many contracts can you use? And this is on the fly, much quicker than putting the actual stop in. So that wraps up my video on capital defense management. I hope you guys got some value from this video and enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments below if there's something specifically you enjoyed or if something I'm missing that you personally use in your trading. I would love to hear your feedback. And also, if you're interested in trading the Top Step Trader Combine, I provided a link in the description below that'll give you 20% off after you sign up. So if you're interested, that will be there in the description. And also, I want to mention that Kristen and I have started up our live trading room with price level trading and we trade the cash open of the u.s markets about an hour and a half 9 30 a.m eastern standard time to 11 a.m and we trade mainly es and nq futures so if you're interested in trading alongside with us and seeing us apply these risk management principles in real time as well as trading psychology we'll discuss types of trade setups we take and a lot more i also provided a link below to check out our live trading room to sign up it's only 50 bucks a month, so it's really affordable. Or we're here to help you guys become proficient at trading. And lastly, I want to thank you guys again. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, just go ahead and click the logo that's popping up now. We appreciate all your support, and we look forward to sharing another video with you soon. And have a great night. Take care, guys. Bye.